talk about making fabric books. Um, I've been making these for years. Anytime somebody has a baby, this is what I like to make for them because it's soft and, you know, I mean, greeting cards are so expensive now. And don't get me wrong, I love a good greeting card and I just keep a box of ones that I think are funny and send them out whenever I feel like it. Um, but what's a baby gonna do with a greeting card? So for the price of about two greeting cards, you can make these squishy books and they're soft and they can drool on them and you know, babies poop on everything. And so you can throw these in the washing machine. Um, and they're really, really fun. And there's a lot of things you can do with these. Like you can sew, I have seen where people sew a vinyl pocket into this and then put you know their picture in it. So if you've got grandbabies, you can put a picture of you and the baby inside the vinyl and then stitch it shut so that it, you know, or you can leave it open like a pocket so that you can take the pocket, you take the picture out and wash it, or you can print on fabric and you can add that in there. Um, another thing that I've done too is with books that say, here's one, books that say, you know, this was made for, put this in your embroidery machine and put the baby's name there. And then it's, you know, it's the baby's, it's the baby's book. So that's really easy to do too. So there's lots of ways you can customize these and make them fun. Um, and I love them. And liter literally, they take about half an hour to make, if you make, you know, to do the whole thing. Um, especially if you use fusible fleece, because you can just iron it on. You don't have to really, you know, you still have to pin it a little bit, but you just iron it on, it's in there. You can quilt them if you want to. You can make each page, you know, cause you make the page like this, where this is one panel. You could quilt this if you wanted to. You could quilt it and quilt the baby's name in there or mama's name or any of that sort of stuff, okay? So I'm gonna show you a couple of ways to, not only to make this, but to make it kind of individual. Um, somebody just asked me how to make it crinkle. So if you notice, hear that? Nope. So this is not the one that you send to the to church. <laughs> this one's okay for church. This one, not so much. So I have stuff called crinkle material, which is right here. It's a yard of fabric, so it's 36 by 48 inches. So you could put the crinkle paper in every page. I usually just put it in the outside page, and then the inside pages don't have it. Okay, um, you just put a single layer in it and sew it all together with everything else. So I'm gonna show you how to do that and add that in there as an option. I think it's fun and babies like anything that make noise. Um, and it doesn't have batteries. I hate the toys that make like noise and stuff. It was a policy when my kids were little that if grandma bought any toys that had batteries in it, then that toy lived at grandma's. So, um, because my house is the place that battery toys go to die. So, um, so this is the crinkle the crinkle paper, and you can put this in every, any one of these books, okay? Um, <laughs> so yeah, okay. So the I wanna show you a full panel of one of these books. So this is the one that we're gonna talk about that I'm gonna demo today. So this is the Goose Tales book. It's a Riley Blake, it's sort of, it looks sort of Halloween-y. Um, but it's all these, you know, nursery rhymes. So it comes on this big panel. It's a one, most of them are one yard panels. Some of them are two thirds panels. And I'm just gonna, so the book has, let's see, it says, it has all these different sort of Grimm's nursery rhymes on it. It's very cute. If you don't wanna do this as a book, you can cut these apart and make panels for a quilt. So you could just cut these out and make squares and then you still have these individual panel pieces. So, you know, you've got like a 10 inch square that you could then work things around it, okay? So what we did earlier today was we cut out all of these squares. This is a bad example because it's hard to see the color, but there is a very faint difference between this yellow and this white. So we cut out the whole, you know, the panels. So you've got one, two, you've got six different squares rectangles those are rectangles so we cut all those out here's the other beauty to this the directions are written right on it 
save the directions to show you what this looks like. So this much of the panel says, do this, and then do this, and then do that, and here's pictures. I like that. So what we did was we cut out all of the squares like this, all right? Then we cut out fusible fleece, the same size, three pieces of fusible fleece, the same size as the panels. Then I had to read the directions because as many times as I do this, I can never remember which pages go with each other. So what I have, and I didn't fuse this because my iron and sewing machine's upstairs, so we're just gonna put this together and we're gonna pretend that we fused one of these pieces to this, okay? So we wanna get it, and I don't cut it perfectly. I cut it close enough that everything's covered, and I'll show you what that looks like in a second. So the, the directions say to take this page and this page and put them face together. So we're gonna, I like to fuse this first. So on three of the pages, we're gonna fuse this to the back. Then we're gonna match these up. Now I get a little anal about it and I like, see how the lines are here and here? I like to be able to match up those lines the best I, you know, the best I can. So I wanna match up that square and that square and you know, you only need like four pins here. And I wanna match up this line and this line. And if it's not perfect, it doesn't really matter because you can zhuzh it later and you're not really gonna see it. I just feel like I can center all the pages together better if I know that these line up. So we're gonna get all of these. I'm just gonna pin the four corners, okay? So we get this all prepared like this. Okay, magic of TV, we're gonna sew it together. So we've sewn this, I know I picked a bad color and I picked a bad thread to see on the camera, but whatever, work with me. So we've sewn this together with a quarter inch seam allowance all the way around, and I've left about three inches open for turning. So since this is kind of messy around the edge, um, I will take and trim off any of that extra just because I like to top stitch my books and I want, I don't want there to be any extra, um, fullness. So I'm just going to trim off all the sides to get rid of any of this extra stuff. And with a long ruler, you can make really quick work of it. And since this one, and the reason I picked this one is because we just got it and we didn't have a shop sample of it yet. So I thought, well, I'll go ahead and make the shop sample as this demo and kill two birds with one stone. So I'm just going to trim off all this extra batting or fleece that's out here and just get rid of it. The other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take and trim off these corners because I want to be able to turn it where the corners are smooth, and we really just want to get rid of any of this extra bulk because she gets in the way. So we're going to trim all four corners. Now, get rid of all that. These, I hate turning things inside out, and I usually make DJ do it, but this is a big enough opening that you can almost just reach in. I grab the opposite corner and pull it through the opening this is not hard stuff okay so it turns pretty easily and on this panel not all of them have this but on this particular panel it even shows you um you know leave this open for turning on each page okay so we've got this turn if you have never tried this turning tool do yourself a favor and get one I love this thing. It has a really thick ball pointed end. So I see people all the time pull out their little scissors and poke through the corners and poke the corners out and immediately poke right through the fabric or their seam ripper or the end of a pen, which leaves a mark. This is about the size of the end of a pen. Okay, but it's got a bald tip. The other thing I dig about this is it won't roll away because it's flat on all the sides. So you're not gonna have to go find it under your machine. Um, you can also use this end, because this end is wider, to press seams if you need to. 
okay? So this is a really handy turning tool. Um, I like to have the opening big enough that I can kind of reach the, the most of my hand in there. And we're just gonna poke these corners out. And here's the beauty of this turning tool is I'm just kind of jabbing at it until I find the corner. And then I can really push on it pretty hard and get a nice point. Nothing's poking through there and I'm pushing on it pretty hard. So I just kind of poke at it randomly for a minute and then once I find that corner, I kind of roll the point and it makes that nice tip, okay? So we're gonna do that with all four corners. And see how when I roll it, it makes the tip really, you know, blunted? Okay, so I'm gonna turn all of these out. Then I'm gonna take this to my ironing board, which is upstairs, so I'm not gonna do that. But we're gonna take and we're gonna press this. Now, this is, you know, my favorite Ferris Bueller quote, you know, he's like, yes, it's juvenile, but hey, it's high school. If you lick your fingers, and then roll the seam, then the end of the seam comes out to the edge really nicely. So you get this really nice flat fold. That is probably the weirdest tip I teach anybody about sewing, is that lick your fingers and then roll the seam. And when you do that, the edge of the seam comes right to the top. So now see how straight that is? And I didn't have to sit with my iron and poke it out as I'm ironing it. It's just gonna lay flat. Plus that fleece is gonna fill in the cracks like Botox, okay? So now I've got this opening. When I go to my iron and press this, I want it to all tuck in. Now if I take and iron everything else first and then come back and iron this, this is gonna lay pretty flat. Cause see, even without my iron, just sort of manipulating it with my hands, it lays pretty flat. And if you get this where it's really lined up really nicely and then press it, everything's gonna lay really nicely. All right, so this is page number two that's all ready to go. Now, all I'm gonna do with this is I'm gonna top stitch all the way around the page. That's gonna close this opening and it's gonna be camouflage. So instead of just having stitching from here to here, which looks a little weird, if you top stitch all the way around, it looks like it was on purpose. Okay? So next, here's a page that's been done and pressed and top stitched. So, and I'm not top stitching really close to the edge, so this is really easy to do. And I just stitched all the way around the book, okay? So the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my book, this is the outside of my book, make sure you look at the pages. And I'm gonna take all three sets of pages. This one's not, I didn't sew this one yet, so we're just gonna have to pretend. And I'm gonna stack them all together, right? So we have three different pages. And then I typically will just use like some, um, the little red clover clips and I'll just clip it like here and here and here and here. And then I'm gonna take it to my sewing machine and I'm just gonna stitch down the middle of the book. I always back stitch here and here. So that's what this looks like. So here's my middle. All the pages have been top stitched through and that's what holds the book together. Everybody can do this. So that wasn't too painful, right? So this is a really great project to do with your kids while they're home. Um, call it art, call it math. I don't know, make them measure it out and do some weird math equations to go with it. Um, this is a really easy way to spend an afternoon and get your kids to sew something. It's simple, it's all straight lines. It's, you know, it's not difficult. Um, but it's very sort of instantly gratifying, especially for a kid. Um, if you've got babies coming or you already have babies, um, make them a book. Get the kids in your life to make the baby a book. And then it's this extra special thing because, you know, somebody, you always love the thing you made for someone more than the thing you bought, right? So, you know, and the, the most these panels are is like $12. And then you just need a little bit of fleece. Easy. Um, it's also a great holiday gift. 
Um, I'm gonna show you the ones that I've got. So you could easily embroider somebody's name on it or you could write, you know, Hanukkah 2020 or whatever you wanna write on the book so that now be it becomes this, you know, ongoing gift, all right? If you want vinyl, I have vinyl. Um, if you want, um, I didn't show anything else today that I'm not showing on the comments sold. So everything will be, uh, we're gonna go through the list. Okay, so where'd my list go? So what we talked about today was the turning tool. The turning tool is number 500. Okay, so we had the turning tool. Then we talked about the crinkle material. It's really quiet in the package, oddly, but in the book, it gives you this noise. So much fun, you know. So yes, you can use these in um, books, you can also do it in pet toys. You can make teethers. You can make, um, they make those activity mats where you put buttons and zippers and stuff. You can use it in that. Those are really fun. So the crinkle material is number 501. So, okay. So the turning tool and the point to point are two of my favorite turning tools for different reasons. If I need to turn something out like, so here's an example of a time that I would want both of those tools. This is our little elf doll. She got a round head. So the point to point turner has a point one end and a curved end on the other side. The curved end will turn her head really nicely. The point will point out her ears fine, but where this gets really handy is these skinny little legs because you could get this all the way up into the tip, tippy toe of her little foot, okay? So that's where they, they do different things. Um, the point to point turner is almost like a hair marker too. You can use it as a hair marker where this isn't gonna work very well for that. So I have both of those turners in my, um, my little um, cart, uh, my sewing cart, and I use both of them all the time. The reason I like fusible fleece, and I'm gonna talk about this, this fusible fleece option here real quick, okay? Um, this is like, this, it's fleece, so it's a polyester. I don't like this for quilts because it's polyester, but for things like this, it's fine. It's not very thick, and the bumpy side is fusible. So if you put this down and you fuse it, you want the fusing to this, you know, you put your cotton fabric on, on top here, and then you press it with a hot iron. I typically will press it from the cottons from the fabric side and then flip it and press it from the batting side too because I want to make sure it's really um, stuck down. You know it's stuck down when you can't feel the bumps anymore because it means that the glue has melted into the fabric. Now, this is very important. The price that is listed up here that says 250, that is for a quarter yard because that's the way we sell fabric on our website. We're one of the few websites that lets you buy fabric by the quarter yard instead of the full yard. So if you're gonna need about two thirds of a yard to make one of these books because you need a 10 and a half inch piece times three. No, you need more than that, 10 and a half. Yeah, you might as well get a yard because that will do a whole panel. So those are the three things that we talked about that you can do for all three books. Now we're gonna talk about the books that we have, okay? Um, the first one that we're gonna talk about, I love this book because I'm a nerd. This is the Monster Lab 123. So it's monsters doing science, teaching babies how to count. So, you know, you've got one laboratory and then you have two scientists. So each page has monsters, science and counting. I love this book. This is the Monster Lab book, okay? So this one is number 503. All right, so we had the Monster Lab book. And then this one, we didn't have a sample made up yet. Um, this one's so cute. Do you remember that book, I Love You to the Moon and Back? That's what this one is. So, you know, page one says, I love you to the moon and back. Page two says, never stop dreaming. 
Page three says, I love you to the moon and back. Page four says, you are my sun and moon. Um, so they're very, very cute little, you know, individual items. This is another one that would be very easy to just cut it out as blocks and make it into a quilt. It's adorable. This one's only a two-third panel book. So it's a little bit smaller and I'll show you what a two-third panel book looks like in a second. I've got another one down here. They're just a little bit shorter. So where this one is this tall, the, the, the two-thirds books are going to be more like this tall. Okay. So this one is called All Our Stars Panel. All Our Stars is 504. What's it say? Okay, we got that. So the Goose Tales book is the one I was just making. This one is number 505. It's a one yard panel book. And we just talked about this one a lot. I love this froggy in the pants and the bow tie. I feel like I would just take this out and like shellac it onto a piece of cardboard or a piece of um, canvas and hang him on the wall. So the Goose Tales book is number 505. Number 506 is the Whirly Gig Dragon book. Now, I, I wish I had one of these made up, but I, I don't. Um, this one, I this entire fabric. So we have this as a book. We have it as a panel that has dragons in front of the a castle, and there's a little wizard dude. And, oh, yeah, I love this one. And so the name of this book is No One Is Dragging Me Down. Get a good pun in there, too. I do love a good dad joke. Um, but they have, each page has different dragons on it. This guy's my favorite, the little three-headed dude. Um, so you got different dragons everywhere on each page. This guy is so cute too. And I do have all of the fabric line that goes with this on the website. So if you wanted, didn't want to make a book, you wanted to make a quilt, you could just cut this square out inside the red and get rid of that little number page and you'd have individual panels. So this fabric line is called Whirly Gig. So if you wanted to look that up on the website and see the coordinating fabrics, you could do that. If you just want the, the panel for the book, it's number 506. All right, number 507 is called Mermaid's Rock. So similar plan. And this book is made by the same people, so they have a very similar set. So what I like with these ones is that the number, the page number, is outside of the block, and you still have seam allowance between the page number and the block. So if you didn't want to make this as a book and you wanted to use it as a quilt panel, it would be really easy to trim around and get there. Um, but this one's also very cute. It's got... Um, it's got all these three little mermaids and it's all about their story of friendship, which is very sweet. Um, and you know, how they get along with the fish and the sharks and the, all that stuff. So that's an adorable one too. Mermaids Rock is 507. Now this is another one of my favorite ones. These ones are made by QT Fabrics and I like them because they're just a little bit weird. This one is the Monster Love Book and he's got horns. So as you turn the pages of the book, the horns go on to the different monsters, okay? And you have all these different colored monsters in the book. So cute. So number 508 is the, is the I Love You Little Monster book. A lot of times the people who get this book get the lab, the Monster Lab one, because monsters. That one's number 508. Number 509 is the same idea as the monsters, but it's a teddy bear and his feet hang down the bottom. So the only thing that's different with this is on the panel, the feet are on the panel and there's two sides of feet. And you cut this out and sew these together separately. And then when you put the, the outside piece of the panel together, you tuck this up inside and then when you turn it, the feet hang down. So it's still really simple, they're very cute. So this one is called Now I Lay Me Down to Sleep and it's a teddy bear book and he's got feet. 
If that one's number, what, 509 yes. is, the, is the teddy bears? Yes. Okay. Then number 510 is another one with the hangy feet. And it's called, um, Where's Llama's Mama? And he's got llama feet. So it's this whole story about how llama's looking for his mama. And every time you turn the page, llama keeps his feet. And he goes through the whole farm looking for his mama till he finds his mama. Um, this one also has a label on it says made with love. So you can put your name on there, which is kind of nice. So, okay. That one is llama's Ma llama mama book panel. Then we go back to the counting books. We showed this one as a, as a new fabric in not that long ago. This has some really great fabrics that go along with it too. It's called Numbers in the Jungle. And this is another counting book that has a bunch of different jungle animals in it. And we also have the coordinating hippo fabric and the zebra fabric. And I think the elephant is the other one we have. But this is a really great, simple counting book with a bunch of different animals on it. Like that. Yeah, Liz. Um, the guy who owns this company that makes these books calls these books books on steroids. Because, they, cause, I mean, just like us, they're just a little extra. So that's the numbers in the Jungle Book. Then we have a couple of books that are licensed. So this is a two-thirds panel book. They're a little bit shorter than the bigger books, but this is Pout Pout Fish. If you've got a kindergartner or, you know, that age group, trust me, they know who Pout Pout Fish is. And this is an alphabet book. So you have different animals to go with the different letters of the alphabet. And they're all undersea critters. And you know, I love the octopus. Very cute. And then my favorite thing is at the end of the book, all the fish have books. I also have a toss fabric that goes with this. So if you wanted to use this as a panel, it would be very easy if you want to use it as a quilt. I've got some pout pout fish fabric that goes with this one. So the pout pout fish is number 512. It's a two thirds panel. That's what makes it a little bit less expensive because you don't have a whole bit of fabric. So it takes a little bit less of the, of the, um, fleece as well. Then we have, uh oh, my page moved. There we go. Then we have James and the Giant Peach. I I really did love me some, uh, you know, Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. And um, there's the new show that's coming out. I think it's on Netflix, the witches story. That's a um, Roald Dahl story. But James and the Giant Peach was always such a fun book. Um, so this is a fabric version, a little bit of like a baby, you know, a baby option of James and the Giant Peach. And the pages look longer because they're shorter. Um, but this is an adorable book. I also have a, um, a coordinating fabric of James and the Giant Peach that goes with this one. And this one is number 513. Okay. This is another one I love because it's a counting book. I've got two more. Let's see. This is another counting book that's Dexter the Dinosaur. Um, it's all about numbers. So here's Dexter. And then in each page, he's counting stuff with you. So this is a great read along book because you can count the number. You can show the number and then you can do the, you know, one, two trucks. And then when you got the bigger one and each um, page, each count has a different animal or item that you can count out with it. So I do love Dexter. There is a, um, a letters book with Dexter too, but I don't have it anymore right now. So the Dexter, the dinosaur is all about numbers is number 514. And then lastly, I have um the gone wild book is the one that i've been showing you with the crinkle paper okay so this is also a counting book but it's jungle animals in the counting book so you have all these different animals and then you can count the animals okay i like the froggies they're very cute 
So this is what I have to show you today is not only how to make a, a fabric book, but fabric books. So that now while it's fresh in your head or you can go back and watch this video again, you could make you some fabric books this week. See you later. Bye.